Greetings, I'm Bezel and this is The Bus Bar. After having slipped in a video of my dog Summer to start things off, I now want to start chipping away at the items picked, I promise, at random as I thought them up that rhyme with bus bar. Remember, my intent is to do a short video on each item as my first video series. And the first one, of course, is bus bar. Now there are all kinds of bus bars, and as I explained before in the intro video, an electrical bus bar receives energy from a power source and distributes that energy to multiple users who are connected to the bus. They come in different shapes and sizes, and basically they work like this. The battery on the left is the energy source. The power is supplied to the bus by closing the master switch, which takes power from the battery and then energizes the battery contactor coil, allowing the contactor to close and get power to the bus and provide power to the users who are connected to the bus. The little dome shapes with the T on the top are called circuit breakers, and they are protection devices which will pop if there is a problem with that particular circuit, such as a dead short to ground from a broken wire or something. Okay, have I sufficiently bored you yet? <laughs> but I've found that there are other kinds of bus bars out there too. I showed you this one in the intro video, but there are many other bus bars as well. Here we have a school bus bar at a place called Trustees in Washington, D.C. Here's a tiny beer bus bar. Here's a permanent bus bar on the street. Various VW bus bars. And finally, a double-decker bus bar. Now, not much more I can say about a bus bar and keep it interesting, but remember, the electrical bus bar is a metaphor for my channel. If you go back to that electrical diagram I showed you, my ideas come from the battery, and the contactor and the master switch are the videos that you are, that, that you, the circuit breakers, in effect, uh, are seeing that are connected to the bus, which is YouTube. Does that make sense? Well, okay. Before I leave you, I've got to tackle this other subject, and that is, the coordinated Muslim terrorist attacks that just occurred in Paris. Friends, we are now living in a day and age where you and I are not uh, completely safe anytime or any place. As long as there are what I want to call fundamentalist Muslims who take the Quran seriously, like when it says, make war on them until idolatry is no more and Allah's, Allah's religion reigns supreme, uh, none of us are completely safe. By the way, that's Surah 839. You can look it up if you want to. Now, this is commentary from an Islamic website. It's called islamicstudies.info. And this is their commentary on Surah 839. They say this. This is the purpose for which Muslims are required to wage war. The purpose is twofold. Negatively speaking, the purpose is to eradicate mischief. I'll say idolatry there in my translation. The positive purpose consists of an establishing a state of affairs wherein all obedience is rendered to Allah alone. This alone is the purpose for which the believers may, rather should, fight. You take that seriously and what happens in, in Paris and other places is uh, not hard to understand. For ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and other fundamentalist Muslim groups, that's it. Submit to Allah or die. So, what can we do to fight back, whether it be Muslim terrorists or lone wolf crazies? Well, I want to give you five things. The first thing is this, and now I am a Christian and I'm coming from a Christian worldview, so let me do this. Thank the true and living God who has revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ that the bulk of Muslims in this world are what I call liberal Muslims. That is, they don't take the Quran seriously especially when it comes to killing the infidel. The second thing is be smart. Keep in mind wherever you find yourself that terror can happen anywhere. Keep it in the back of your head and always be keeping an eye out for things that don't seem right. If in a store or a restaurant or a larger venue, always know where a safe exit is and have a strategy as to how to get there. And three, most importantly, I think, consider your strategy for your life after you die. The people who were murdered in Paris had no idea that that would be their last night on earth. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater here. 
Every authentic masterpiece has counterfeits, and Islam is a Christian counterfeit. See, Christianity works the opposite with the Bible. Take the words of the New Testament seriously, and you will be willing to die to yourself, that means deny your sinful desires, live for the glory of God, and endeavor to love your neighbor as yourself. That, folks, is not a bad thing. Five, take time to consider the truth claims of Christianity if you are not a Christian. Jesus lived, died, this is historic, and rose again according to eyewitnesses. He died for sinners like you, this is what the New Testament tells us, and me, and he now lives at the right hand of the Father, interceding for those who trust in him alone for salvation from sin. The Apostle Paul writes in his letter to the Romans that the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, is the power of God to save every single person with one qualification, that they truly believe in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins, that they repent of their sins, and now live to glorify God. So, until next time, this is Bezel encouraging you, don't give in to terrorism even an inch. Live your life, be smart, and always be ready to die well.